So I've just gone out of my sauna and I've had it for about 10 months now and I think there just are a few things that you should know before you buy one. Hey everybody, my name's Aidan, this is Everyday Tech. If you are new to my channel, then welcome. If you are a returning viewer, then welcome back. And if you haven't already, then please consider subscribing below and don't forget to hit that like button. So about 10 months ago, I bought a portable home steam sauna. You know, the pop-up ones, I'll leave a link in the description to the video that I made. And it's pretty good, you know, it's nice, it's something you know i think people can get a lot of use out of but is it one of those things where you use it once and don't use it again maybe so in this video i'm going to talk about some things that you may not have thought about when you actually own a steam sauna and they are portable but you're not going to take it anywhere other than around the house but there are things that you need to consider and number one is the size it is quite chunky and it does require a lot of space now i can get it in this room i'm not going to bring it in now because i've got a whole computer set up now which i didn't before and i'm not going to fill this room i mean i've got lights i've got a camera there i've got a camera here and i'm not going to fill this room with you know a steam sauna because i don't want to damage my equipment so, you know, you need a space to set it up. And that's great because you're thinking, well, it's portable. So I can just put it away when I'm finished. Yes, you can. But again, in an ideal world, you actually need a place to store it before you put it away. Because it does get wet. And if you just put it away while it's wet, it is going to get mouldy. So it does need to dry out ideally fully before you put it away what i have to do is once it's all popped out i just fold it back in so it's flat and i leave it on a towel against the well against the wall of a room until it's dry and then i put it away obviously if you are using it every day and you have a dedicated space then that's fine but if you need that space then it is just something to consider. Another thing is the actual steam itself. Now, this is what connects from the steam sauna to the inside. So the steam comes through here and it comes out these holes here. But what you don't see is in the bottom of here, there's a tiny little hole. So when all this steam is generated, it comes out this hole in the bottom. And when you are finished with your sauna, you will find a tiny little pool in the bottom and it, i think it does say it in the instructions so the way to get around that is to get a side plate so when it's in the steamer put this on the side plate and it'll catch any water that runs out because otherwise you end up with a soggy bottom of the sauna and it can cause damage to your floors if it's not properly cared for. Which leads me to the next bit. Putting towels on the floor. Now some people put towels inside the sauna so it catches all the moisture and it kind of kills two birds with one stone but I don't like that idea. I put two towels on the floor underneath the sauna between the floor and the sauna. And the reason I do that is because where I use it, there is either carpet or laminate flooring. And if you use either of those two things, you do need a barrier between them. Because if you don't, you'll end up with a warped laminate floor. You will. Unless you take precautions with like something like this and a towel. Or with a carpet, you could end up making it wet constantly and then you could have mold growing so not ideal obviously if you've got lino or tile or a stone floor it might not be so much of an issue but either way i just think it's good practice to lay at least at least one towel on the floor between the floor and the sauna something else i think you need to know is even though it's got pockets 
ideally you need everything that you need to keep you occupied set up before you get in. That being, if you're watching TV or a tablet or something on your mobile phone, have it set up and playing before you get in and make sure it will last for the duration of your sauna because the only way to access things, if you can reach it, is to unzip the zips on the side, put your arms out and reach for it. The downside of that is the steam will escape and you will feel a chill on your skin where the cold air is entering and the steam does escape, which does make it less effective and it will have to work a little bit harder to build that steam up again. And also, when you are making sure it's round your neck, make sure it's as close to your neck as possible. It's just another area for steam to escape. And again, it's not ideal. It's not like a real sauna where you are enclosed. You know, you've got a, it's, it's only a thin membrane. So you've got to make sure you keep all the zips closed, all the large entrances, well, exits, where your head goes or hands as tight as possible to make sure no steam escapes. Something else that you may not have considered is you may need to use an extension cable. Now, it may not be an issue for you. You may be able to have the portable sauna generator unit next to a wall outlet. But if you can't, because the cable isn't the longest, you may need an extension cable. So just bear that in mind because Again, it's not a big thing, but not everybody has all of these things. And probably one of the biggest things that people don't realize that they may need as an optional extra is a seat. Now, everybody's thinking, yeah, actually, I've got a seat. I've got a dining room chair. I have got a stool. I have got something to sit on. Brilliant. As long as it's not leather, as long as it's not filled with foam, as long as it's not cloth, it pretty much has to be plastic because this is a steam sauna. You are gonna ruin everything unless it's plastic, well, or metal and plastic, because otherwise water's gonna penetrate it and it's just gonna destroy it. So you are gonna have to either have to have a fold out plastic chair. At a push, I would say you may be able to use a camping chair, although you will sit lower and the hooded bit at the top may come to about here. I wouldn't recommend a camping chair anyway because at the end of the day it's still a material that can absorb moisture and if you're sweating it is going to smell. You are going to want something that is going to wipe down. So the last thing is actually talking about the laundry that it can create and you're thinking well how much can it create? Well enough to make it something to consider because you may have a towel on the floor between the sauna and the floor. That's, you know, you, you can reuse that, it's not a problem. But when you are done with the sauna, you may wish to get a towel and wipe the inside of the sauna free of all the moisture. So it will dry quicker and you can put it away quicker. Well, once you've used the that towel, then that's got to go in the wash. Plus, you know, you've just got to make sure your plate's washed. And then you've got the towel that you need when you get out. And there just seems to be a lot of towels. So even though some of the towels can be reused, like the one on the floor, it means you've got to keep it out for that purpose until you need it for something else. Because otherwise you're going to wash it and use it, you know, for bath time, whatever you want to use it for. And the one you're going to wipe down the sauna with, that's going to need cleaning each time, unless you just let it dry. But then you've got to use it each time for that purpose, because you're not going to wipe, not going to wipe down the seat and the steam sauna and then use that one to dry yourself because it'll already be wet. Plus, it's going to be disgusting because it's going to be full of sweaty steam and nobody wants to dry themselves on what would be a dirty towel. So how often do I use my sauna? Well, I used it quite a bit when I first had it. And then summer came along and I used it a lot less because I didn't want to feel really hot in the summer. 
But now winter has come back around, I have found myself using it a little bit more. It is a little bit frustrating that you do need to keep it out for an extra day to dry out. Not so bad if you are going to use it day after day. But it does take up room and it does take up space. And you do need that area in your house where you can use it. But I can confirm it does work and it does work well. And for the price I paid, I cannot grumble. It is much cheaper than going to a gym and you get pretty much all of the benefits. And don't forget below, I shall leave a link in the description below where you can buy the steam sauna. I mean, they are pretty cool. I think they are worth the money. And if you can get one, then I think you should get one. But these things you should still bear in mind. So guys, if you found this useful, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button. If you didn't find it useful, double tap that dislike button. And guys, I shall see you next time.